Hello and welcome to Welch Lab Chemistry. Today we will be performing the fifth reaction in our series to make an N-annulated perylene diamide dimer. Full details can be found in the paper in the video description. Warning, this reaction requires elemental bromine. Bromine is highly toxic and corrosive volatile liquid and should only be handled by experienced chemists with the appropriate safety precautions. For this reaction, we will require bromine and N-hexyl PDI, which we made in a previous video, as well as dichloromethane and methanol as solvents. First, to a round bottom flask containing about 125 milliliters dichloromethane is added 4 grams of N-hexyl PDI. The funnel and the flask were rinsed with a small amount of DCM. Next, the bromine is added. Since bromine is in large excess, precise measurements are not required. Stoichiometrically, only about 0.3 milliliters of bromine is required, but to ensure the reaction goes to completion, we add a full pipette, which amounts to 1.5 milliliters. If you watch carefully, you can see that the solution darkens dramatically as the bromine is added. This is due to the bromine quenching the fluorescence from the PDI. This reaction can be monitored by TLC plates run in DCM. Fortunately, since this reaction does not form any other products or undergo multiple brominations, careful watching is not necessary. Once the reaction is completed, as indicated by consumption of the starting material according to TLC, the excess bromine is removed by bubbling air through the solution. We use this method to remove excess bromine because it is the simplest, though other methods such as extraction with sulfite or thiosulfate salts are preferable if your ventilation setup cannot handle elemental bromine. This step can take a while, but does not need to be monitored closely. You can check to see if the bromine is removed by seeing if the gases escaping the flask are able to stain tissue paper. Next, the solvent and a small amount of residual bromine are removed on a rotopath. The resulting solid is suspended in methanol and filtered. One of the nice parts of this reaction is that all excess starting materials and byproducts are removed either on the rotovap or in the filtration, leading to a facile isolation of highly pure product with minimal losses. After drying and isolating, we are left with 4.4 grams of brominated product, which corresponds to a 98% yield. To confirm the purity, we can once again look at the proton NMR. As usual, we can see the chloroform peak at 7.2 ppm, but we can also see a peak at 5.2 ppm, which corresponds to residual dichloromethane. A highly characteristic peak for this product is the one at just above 10 ppm, which correlates to the one remaining strained Bay proton. Since all other peaks also correspond to the product or volatile solvents, we can be certain that we have pure product. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time for the final reaction in the series, a modified Nagishi coupling to form an N-annulated perylene diamide dimer. Since the series is almost finished, I would like to know what you want to see next. Please comment below if you have any suggestions. If you want to see more synthesis, the types of uses these materials have, characterization, or any other aspects of a functional organic materials lab.